Hey St. Catharines, Mayor Matt Sisko here. Welcome to another episode of Talk STC. I'm excited to have you here today. We've got a couple of great guests. It's been a very, very busy time at the city of St. Catharines. Had a very successful State of the City speech this past month. I want to thank the Greater Niagara Chamber of Commerce for all of the work that they put in. It gave me an opportunity to reflect on a lot of the big things that have been happening, the key points uh, that are coming up in the upcoming year. Uh, we also had a number of events going on over the last couple of weeks. We wrapped up Black History Month. I want to say thank you to Future Black Female, Black Owned 905, and the Downtown Association for partnering with the City of St. Catharines on some Black History events and uh, all kinds of other cool things we did on our social media. Uh, I also had the opportunity to hang out at the Niagara Health Foundation Gala. I got to bowl the uh, Big Brothers Big Sisters Niagara Bowl for kids' sake. Uh, and I want to thank my friends in the town of Lincoln and Mayor Sandra Easton for joining us as a part of the Municipal Challenge. I do like to point out that uh, my council team was able to beat the City of St. Catharines staff team and handily, so I appreciate their help in that effort. Uh, I had a lot of fun attending the Canada versus Nicaragua uh, FIBA America Cup playoff game. Uh, very cool time there. I want to give a shout out to the kids from Immaculate Concepcion who sang the national anthems before the game and sang the Nicaraguan national anthem in Spanish, much to the delight of a couple of the Nicaraguan players who were very impressed. So kudos to those kids for a great job. Uh, I also had the opportunity, it's been a busy couple of weeks, also had the opportunity uh, to be there with the Junior A Athletics, uh, our lacrosse team, as they secured the Minto Cup for 2025. So another check mark in the sports tourism world for us. Uh, looking forward to hosting the National Lacrosse Championships next summer with the Junior A Athletics. Uh, and I want to just say a very happy and joyful March break to all my friends and colleagues, former colleagues in the teaching world, as well as all the students in the community and all the parents. I know that this week is going to be... Uh is going to be a good one for you as well. Today's episode, we got a lot of fun stuff going on. I will be joined by Grace Howes, who's the communications specialist at the St. Catharines Public Library. We're going to talk about all the great things that are going on at our library branches. And we're also going to talk a little bit about the Mayor's Book Club and Reading Challenge that's been going on this year. And then after that, I'll be joined by Kendra Mantha, who is the president of Down Syndrome Niagara, along with her son, Lincoln, to talk about upcoming World Down Syndrome Day on March 21st. But my first guest today is Grace Howell. She is a communication specialist at the St. Catharines Public Library. Grace, welcome. Thank thanks, you. Thanks for coming on today. So a little bit of a bio. You've been helping the community discover the library's growing collection for the past two years. You have a bachelor's degree in digital journalism, English language, and literature, as well as a public relations certificate from Niagara College. Yeah. Okay. You are a proud 40 Under 40 Business Achievement Award recipient, dedicated volunteer, enthusiastic runner. I like that. Uh, and a diehard romance reader. That's me. That is phenomenal. Welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Before we get started, help me out. Give me a better understanding. I assume people who work at the library love books. So is that the case with you? Are you an avid book person? Yes, I'm a big reader. I, I don't think you have to love books to work at a library because we're so much more than books now. You know what, and that's 100% fair, and now that I think about it as you say that, yes, the library has expanded greatly since that, that sort of, when I was a kid, it was all about, you know, going, picking up books, reading the books, bringing them back, going, getting your next set of books. Tell me about the ways that the library has expanded what it does over the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, there's a few pretty big ways, but uh, for folks who don't know, like the library of things is constantly growing, and these are your non-traditional items. Uh, some of my personal favorites are the musical instruments. We're talking full-size guitars, ukuleles, uh, electronic drum kits. So like lots of different ways to make noise and have fun. Um, I also love the parks passes. So you can get Ontario parks passes and um, Niagara Conservation Authority parks passes. So like this gives you access to nature without hurting your wallet, which is a great way to get people outside. So like really the library is no longer about just like being inside reading your book, right? We're doing so much more. So could you, could you pair the Parks Pass in the winter maybe with like a set of snowshoes? Absolutely, and I'm sure people do. I, I just wanted to point out the fact you have snowshoes as well. We do have snowshoes. This year, it's a bit of a moot point. We're, yeah. we're kind of bummed about the way the snow has uh, not come out for us, but uh, in colder seasons, yeah, we, will ha we do have snowshoes yeah. for all ages. We'll, we'll blame El Nino on this one because sure. uh, it's easier and, and less depressing if we just think about El Nino. Uh, and telescopes, I saw that as well. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, so the tabletop uh, telescopes are really popular. Yeah. There's always a wait list yeah. uh, to borrow one. Um, 
And yeah, they're very also user friendly. They come with a guide, they come with uh, kind of like a how-to manual. Um, so really fun for families who are trying to find something to do uh, during those like big um, events, like, you know, uh, you want to say solar eclipse right now, but you know you shouldn't, shouldn't say solar yeah. eclipse. No, those big uh, like uh, celestial events, I guess they'd be called, where... Uh, meteor showers. Meteor showers. Um, even just finding uh, constellations is really exciting for kids, so... That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so the Mayor's Reading Challenge. Um, this was a cool idea that sort of happened in conjunction between the library and my office. What do people need to know about the challenge before they come down to the library? For sure. So first and foremost, year round, all ages, and you can jump in at any time, right? So I know it started in January. We've been reading uh, for several months, but if you didn't jump on right away, you know, it's never too late. Yep. Um, and then also that every month is a little bit different. So I know that the mayor's office has put together a great list of categories. Um, so this month we have lots of folks reading books that are less than 200 pages or books that are over 500 pages. So it's a bit of a choose your own adventure this month. Yep. Um, but it encourages people to read outside of their comfort zone. Yeah. So uh, first and foremost, get on board, figure out your category of the month. Uh, so that's uh, available on our social, on your social, and then also all the information's at the library as well. Yep. Um, and then choose your own adventure. Pick a book from the library that fits the category and start reading. Yeah, you know what? I, one of the coolest parts for me, my daughter found out about this, and she's 10. And uh, she found out that I was doing the reading challenge in the book club, and she thought, well, can I be involved? And I said, well, yeah, sure. We made uh, choices for uh, kids and then for young adults. And, and I assumed she would go towards the kids' side of things. Mm -hmm. And she immediately said, no, I want to read the young adult book. So I've been you know, grabbing those books for her as time yeah. went on. This month was a little bit different uh, because I want to say the young adult book that was chosen was the fifth in the Harry Potter series mm -hmm. because it That's was the right. first one that was over 500 pages. And so I mentioned that to her and she was a little disappointed. And I said, well, how about we start at the beginning and if you put together a couple of books that are worth 500 pages, yeah. then, then we'll count that. And she said, okay. Well, so she's on book four. You know, we're not even halfway through the month yet. And she's on book four of the series. She has hammered them. Yeah. And I'm loving watching it because I want her to develop that love of reading that I've had my whole life. Um, my two older boys, they like to read, but they don't read the way I do, but I think she's picking it up. So I'm hoping that that's getting out there into the broader community and folks that maybe didn't have that desire before are starting to discover or rediscover how much they love reading. Absolutely. What I love about the challenge too is that it's fundamentally like only 12 books a year, Yeah. right? One book a month, very attainable for many folks. Um, and it's not strict. Obviously, you have your recommendations of, you know, what you think would be a great pick for folks uh, for that month's category, but you can pick whatever, right? If you don't think you got a lot of time this month, uh, go with the option of less than 200 pages um, and find something in a genre you love. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I discovered a new genre. You told me that, uh, so I'm reading The Fourth Wing. Right. That's romanticy. Yes, that's what I they call it now. I have never read a romanticy book before. Didn't even know it was a thing until about 45 minutes ago. Um, but a fantastic book, and you looked really excited and then had to like hold your tongue because you couldn't tell me about what's going I know, all happen. the spoilers. I'm just like, don't do it, don't do it. I really appreciate that you haven't ruined <laughs> it for me. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> even though the library isn't just about books anymore, mm -hmm. it's still about books. Like It's we still love a place books. for books. Yes, for sure. So what's popular at the library right now? Um, so some of our most popular things um, aren't books. Okay. Uh, so... I might quickly just mention uh, one of our most popular services, which is our gamer space. I was going to get to the game, gamer space at some point, so I'm glad you're bringing it up. Yeah, so right now we're averaging 300 uh, like uses per month, so 300 people coming in uh, and playing video games on like Nintendo Switch, on uh, the gaming PCs, on Xbox, and uh, we love how, how well our community has responded to this. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, that's a great way to get people into the library and then realizing all the other stuff we've got going on, right? Um, and then if you don't, if you don't want to hang out at the library, you can take a Nintendo Switch home, which is pretty cool. You just have, to, there is a bit of a wait list, of course, yep. very popular. Um, so that, that's like a classic uh, thing that we're doing now. And then we've also got the, the things that are beloved. So like the Wi-Fi hotspots are yep. very popular. Our board games are super popular. You know, things that kind of enrich your your experience, kind of enrich your hobbies. Um, and then I did, 
I knew you'd ask about books because that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And I brought um, this book. So it's uh, Kirsten Hanna's The Woman, The Women. And this book is currently our single most popular book. Okay. As of yesterday, according to the data, we had 117 holds on it. And it's so popular, I brought the audiobook version because I couldn't get my hands on the paper version. Okay. That's how popular it is. So I just thought I'd bring it to show you. Uh, and this is what people are reading right now. Um, amongst a ton of other stuff. Yeah. So I'm really glad you said, you know, with uh, the gamer space, because a lot of people have questioned me like, oh, library, you got video games. But I love the idea that, you know, that's how you get people into the library and then they discover the books and everything else. One of my favorite pieces about the Wi-Fi hotspots is when you jump on, you realize, oh, so all of those publications that the library has access to, the newspapers and everything else, well, now you can read those, right? So you mm -hmm. can you can get in and you can read the Los Angeles Times or, you know, the, the Guardian or whoever uh, through, you know, the, the apps that are available and everything else because you're going in through the library. So I, I appreciate you bringing like all of the other things beyond the books Mm -hmm. and talking about those because I don't think people totally understand exactly what's there. If someone wanted to head down to the library, let's say they actually want to take out a book, mm -hmm. what do they need to do if they don't have a library card already? It's actually surprisingly easy to get a library card. Um, and for anyone who lives, works, or studies in St. Catharines, it's completely free. Uh, all we really need is proof of address. We just need to know that you live in St. Catharines. So um, if, it, uh, if it's that you work in St. Catharines, you can bring your pay stub, you could bring your driver's license, anything that just shows that you um, th you have a connection to St. Catharines. Yeah. Way. And, and the library card allows you to go into any of the branches. You know, like a lot of people think library, they think the downtown branch specifically, but mm -hmm. we've got the, the branch in Meriton, we've got the branch at the Kiwanis Aquatic Center. Uh, one of the coolest initiatives is the branch in Port Luzi. Yes. Uh, and uh, your card will actually get you into the building because it's not always staffed, but it's, the capacity for self-serve so people can go in there and they can take out books at, uh, on their own time whenever they mm -hmm. need to. Um, have we seen, you know, an uptick in, you know, users in the library? Are we seeing those services become more popular outside of the main library? For sure. So uh, at Port especially, yeah. uh, like our extended access model has seriously seen an increase in foot traffic going through that branch, which shows that uh, the community does need like a library in Port Luzi the community will use it if it's available mm -hmm. and it can be super difficult to staff. So uh, having the access model where you can go in uh, even when staff aren't scheduled has been like so well uh, received. Um, and yeah, like you can go in, you can read the paper, you can borrow a book and use self checkout. It's so seamless. And yeah. like, even as staff, we're so impressed by how easy it is to use. Oh, that's awesome. All right. So as we wrap up, I don't want to say top three books because top three books can be really narrowing. Top three authors. Who are your three favorites? For sure. Okay. So I think about this a lot. Um, and as we chatted like, behind the scenes, like I do read almost exclusively romance. So my top three are definitely uh, like top one, first of all, is Abby Jimenez. Everything she writes is gold. No matter what, she gets five stars from me. She's okay. incredible. Um, another popular uh, author that I love is Carly Fortune. Yep. Local, Toronto-based. Um, and then finally, a super local author. Her name is um, Hannah Bonin-Young. Bonin okay. Uh, she, I believe, lives in Niagara. And she has written some really incredible books uh, that if you have any interest in romance, you've got to check out. Okay. I'm not a huge romance guy, but apparently I kind of like romanticy. So maybe I'm introducing a new genre to my life. Yeah. Grace, thank you so much for coming and uh, sitting down with us today. Thank you for nerding out a little bit with me on the fun, fun things about libraries and books. Appreciate it. For sure. Thanks for having me. Definitely. We'll be right back after this. St. Catharines, welcome back to Talk STC. My next guests are Kendra Mantha, president of the Down Syndrome of Niagara, and her son, Lincoln. Lincoln is interested in looking around all of the stuff going on in the studio. Um, Kendra, Niagara resident, you're a mom to four, Amelia, Spencer, Weston, and Lincoln, obviously. Uh, yes. Lincoln's five years old, he's in SK, and he's been rocking an extra chromosome since birth. Yes. So, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I'm happy to have you here. Tell me a little bit about your family. Tell me about the journey with Lincoln. Yeah. Um, so we did not know before Lincoln was born that he was going to have Down syndrome. So it was after birth diagnosis for us. Um, 
our midwife came to do our home visit the next day and mentioned some characteristics she noticed with him that were common with Down syndrome and then recommended that we head to the St. Catharines Hospital. They kind of did a quick analysis and then wanted to send us to McMaster for more genetic testing. Um, they were more equipped to handle our situation, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so we spent the next 12 days at McMaster. Um, we were able to get out just in time for Christmas, but while we were there is, I think he was five days old when we got the confirmed diagnosis of Down syndrome. Um, they got us in touch with the Niagara Children's Center or who we would be in touch with the Niagara Children's Center once we got home and got settled. Um, yeah, when we were at McMaster, he was on oxygen for a while. So low muscle tone is very common yeah. with people with Down syndrome. So he was having, he just needed a little bit of help in the beginning with breathing and eating. So that's kind of what warranted our stay at McMaster. Um, he did have a heart murmur that was detected after birth that they just needed to monitor. So it was kind of a best case scenario. Didn't think that it was going to be anything that would impede him. He had to have a sedated echocardiogram when he was two and a half and they were happy with the results. And then he had another one at four and it had um, cleared itself up enough that he no longer needs to be followed by cardiology. Okay. But um, congenital heart issues is a common um, it's common with people with Down syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. So the journey's been one that's been a fair amount of in the hospital and out of the hospital? Um, not so much. More so kind of uh, just in the beginning, lots of doctor's appointments in the beginning for the most part, other than when he gets sick, it kind of sticks around a little bit longer than yeah. typical kids. But other than that, he is fairly healthy, fairly busy. Uh, so you work through the Children's Center. Uh, yes. Other organizations in the community that you uh, you had connections with and contact with? Um, so with Lincoln being five, we've kind of had the younger age of things. So for us, the majority is through the Niagara Children's Center. He did physio through the Children's Center, speech therapy, occupational therapy. Unfortunately, um, just after he turned one is when COVID started. So okay. for him, it turned everything to virtual. Yes. So in case virtual schooling with children isn't fun enough, trying to do virtual therapies with a one-year-old is even more fun. Um, but he did really well um, adapting as best as I guess you can to virtual learning. That's the only organization that we've specifically been involved with other than Down Syndrome Niagara themselves. Okay. And I've, obviously, as the past chair of the Niagara yes. Children's Center, I love hearing these yes. positive stories. And I know the therapists did a lot of work during COVID to try and make yes. the online therapy. Oh, they as... did. And it couldn't have been easy by any means. No. So, so I mean, you mentioned the Down Syndrome mm -hmm. uh, Niagara. You're the president of the group now. Correct. Uh, so tell me about your work there. How did you get involved? Um, and um, what's, the, what's the organization involved with? Yes. So when he was born... Um, Saying Down syndrome out loud was a little bit scary. So it's one of those things that you can't be too overwhelmed as a new parent with like, yeah. here's all this stuff. So I did have a few people reach out to me. I do have um, a cousin who has an older son with Down syndrome. So she very much, hey, here's the information for when you're ready for it. Um, and a couple pe people reached out to me that way and left it kind of at my own to look more into it. And then I found out when he was seven weeks old, they had their annual general meeting that I was, anyone is invited to that actually. So I decided I would pop into that. And before I left, my husband, who knows I get involved with everything, told me not to join anything, just go and get information and mm -hmm. enjoy it. And of course I left the meeting asking where I sign up for this, just yep. to be more involved with everything. And for our older children too, for them to have that support of other siblings that had the same things that they were dealing with. Um, so started out as a member at large. So just helping out with fundraisers, things like that. Um, Down syndrome Niagara for um, their community and their members do a number of events. So they do a Christmas party, a summer party. We have a really fun Halloween party. Um, so after being involved as a member at large for a year, I became the vice president. Yep. And then we had some board changes last year. And then as of this year, I'm the president. <laughs> Don't you love it? Your husband said, don't get involved. 100%. Do he tells anything. me that every time I do anything to not get involved. Yeah, so I sympathize with your husband. Yes. I, I may have a wife very similar. Yes. So. so I get involved in everything. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, Down Syndrome Niagara is running events, fundraisers all the time. Yes. What's coming up? What's um, so our next big thing is 
uh, trivia night. So Downtown Niagara currently um, has two major fundraising events mm -hmm. each year. So the next one coming up is April 13th. It's our trivia night. It's mm -hmm. open to the public. We're having it at Club LaSalle. It's going to be a really fun evening. Um, if you go to our website, there's spots there that you are able to donate, get in touch with us if you want to be a table sponsor for the event, if you want to donate towards our raffle prizes. The other event that we do have is in the fall time, uh, end of September, we do a friendship walk. So another fundraiser. Yep. Um, Dancing in Niagara relies heavily on fundraising in yep. order to be able to give back to our community. So anything donation wise that we're able to raise through that is always great for our community. So in the mandate for Down Syndrome Niagara, I mean, is the goal, you know, just to, to be out in the community and to educate the community? A hundred percent. So that was my biggest thing. And I've done it a lot in the past is, um, doing posts. So, um, October is Down Syndrome Awareness Month in Canada. The first week in November is Down Syndrome Awareness. And then what we have coming up is World Down Syndrome Day. Mm -hmm. So March 21st, is World Down Syndrome Day, and the date represents um, 321 because to, in order to have Down Syndrome, you've got three copies of the 21st chromosome. Yep. So that's significant that way. Um, but I'm huge on knowledge is power. And yep. when I did have him, I started sharing tons of things. So I would share lots of facts about Down Syndrome because growing up, I only knew two people with Down Syndrome. And I did, other than having Down Syndrome, I was not aware of anything beyond that. So I started sharing facts because huge knowledge is power and you only no. learn by asking questions about things or being provided these things so i shared tons of information and the amount of people that would come up to me and thank me for sharing because they were unaware of it or just the stigma around the negativity that older generations grew up with so mm -hmm. seeing that it's a much more of a positive no. thing so huge knowledge is power um during covid we joined my daughter's classroom virtually because she wanted to educate her friends yep. on what makes Lincoln different and what is extra about him. Um, so definitely knowledge is power. So providing more information about things. Um, for oh. World Down Syndrome Day, we, sh we wear mismatched socks. So yes. if you see a visual of chromosomes, they do look like colorful socks. So yep. the idea behind that is wearing mismatched socks to just generate conversation about it. So to inquire why you're doing this. And even if you're providing one fun fact about Down syndrome or just information about it. I, I will say the mismatch socks yeah. thing is one of my favorite, like of any group that does anything to try yes. and raise awareness. And I think it's because of exactly that. It's true. I, I taught grade nine and 10 biology and the yes. chromosomes kind of do look it's like that. It's very cool looking. Yes. And so, but it's, it's a great visual representation of people, you know, caring and it's, you know, you talk about educating the community. Yeah. Has it been your experience that the knowledge level is continuing to rise and people are taking the time to understand? Yes. Because the, I've noticed since I've had to dive into this kind yeah. of prior to that, I wouldn't be able to provide information because even in myself, it wasn't something that I immersed myself in knowing because I didn't directly need to have a reason to know about it. So now that I do, um, definitely love educating people on down syndrome. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, from my, my family's perspective, autism is yes. very big with us. Yep. And it's one of those things where I feel like the general level of knowledge is starting to rise yes. and people are getting it and they, they're interested. Yes. And that's maybe the, the most heartwarming thing is it to is. know that people do care because I was like you, like I knew, but yes. I didn't know. Exactly. Now that I'm forced to, I'm realizing that other people who aren't forced to are taking an active yes. interest. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So March 21st, World Down Syndrome Day. Um, how can folks in the community, beyond mismatched socks, what's your best suggestion to folks in the community to be able to get involved? A lot of schools, um, if you look at their calendars, have it. So um, classes, wearing different socks to classes. Just in general, the whole idea behind it is um, while they look different, they still work the same. They still yeah. do what they're supposed to do. So it's kind of raising awareness on different being okay. Yep. Yeah and they're not being the stigma behind being different. Well, I will say, he, Lincoln is <laughs> as wiggly, sir. You are as wiggly as any other five-year-old I have ever dealt with. Um, what's the family dynamic like at Crazy. home? Crazy. Yeah, I just... <laughs> it's pretty wild. Um, I'm, and I, I'm past the five-year-old stage, and I'm kind of like 
I miss this. Yes. But then there's a part of me who's like, oh, but it took so much energy. It is. And so with Lincoln, because everything is a little more delayed, so he still does all of the things typical kids do, but I find it's delayed by about a year and a half. Yeah. So just when we think we're like, oh, we're out of these terrible twos, and he didn't have that, it hits when he's about four. Okay. So it's just like all the things we're dealing with now, we kind of hoped we'd skip over, but not quite. But it's a very, very busy household. Nice. So is he a sports guy? Um, he played soccer this summer, um, and it was very cute. So Port Weller Soccer League in St. Catharines has yep. um, a special needs team, which I was very excited to get him involved in. Yes. And when we went to the first game and first practice, realized it was an all ages special needs team, and he was the youngest, smallest person. So that's, so. that's interesting because I have a little bit of experience with that yes. team with my youngest son, mm -hmm. but he's always been the largest person. So yes. even when he was only five and six, yes. he was still significantly bigger than a lot yes. of the other kids. Um, so Lincoln was significantly smaller than everyone yes. else. So the coach was great and had like a little section set up for him. Um, he likes anything being active. He does being the youngest two, three older siblings get hauled around to a lot of sporting events and dance competitions. Yep. Um, but very busy, loves to follow around them, loves to be active, loves to be outside, <laughs> loves being around other people. Nice. Yes, yeah, very social. Well, I will say, Lincoln, that's going to stand you in good stead in your life, my friend. Yes. Keep being wiggly. It's what five-year-olds are supposed yes. to be. So, <laughs> Kendra, thank you so much. Oh, for thank you so much for having us. Lincoln, thank you for coming in, buddy. I really appreciate you coming onto my show today. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. No. Uh, no. No. Okay. <laughs> He's busy being wiggly. He's very busy. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it.